Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast, and today I want to tell you about a rules loophole that turns Fiend Hunter, and many cards like it, into a repeatable removal spell. You can absolutely crush people with this trick, although you need to know exactly what you're doing to be able to execute and explain it properly. Let me tell you just how it works. Okay, to fully understand how this trick works, let's quickly just recap how the stack works in Magic. When a spell is cast, or an ability is activated or triggered, it goes onto the stack. When both players pass on taking an action in response, called passing priority, the top item on the stack resolves. And of course, you can respond to actions. So the classic is I have a grizzly bear, you lightning bolt it, I giant growth it, then we pass. The top effect happens first, making the bear a 5-5, five five, then the bolt resolves, not killing the bear. If that's flipped around and I cast my giant growth and you lightning bolt it, my bear will die. The bolt resolves first, the creature takes three damage and dies, then when we both pass again, giant growth does nothing and goes into the graveyard. Notably, and important for what I'm about to teach you, you can respond to your own actions too. Okay, so stack down, got it. Now let me walk you through this one. And if you didn't know about this trick already, please post in the comments down below. I'd love to see just how many people I taught this to. When Fiend Hunter enters the battlefield, it exiles another target creature. So it comes into play and nabs something. Then when it leaves the battlefield, that creature comes back. How can you hack something so straightforward? Well, it works like this. Cast Fiend Hunter, it enters the battlefield, you target a creature to exile, but then, plot twist. In response, you retain priority and you remove the Fiend Hunter from the battlefield by, say, bouncing it back to your hand with an unsummon. This puts the Leaves the Battlefield trigger on the stack above the Exile trigger. When both players pass, the first item on the stack resolves. When Fiend Hunter leaves the battlefield, return the Exiled card to the battlefield under its owner's control. Except, there is no Exiled creature yet, so nothing happens. Then, when both players pass again, the Exile target creature effect resolves. The net result? Their creature is gone forever and Fiend Hunter is safely in your hand to be used again. The best way to use this is with bounce or blink effects, and even better if they're repeatable. Something like Erratic Portal, Crystal Shard, Mist Meadow Witch, or Videlkin Mastermind is a perfect combo here. You can keep doing this trick over and over again. But in an absolute pinch, you can also use sacrifice tricks or removal spells to make it work. Cast a Fiend Hunter and then kill it off in response by sacrificing it and whatever you targeted will still be gone forever. And Fiend Hunter is far from the only card to use this combo. Want it in black? You have Faceless Butcher for creatures or Mesmeric Fiend to take a card from their hand. Not to mention its brother, Tide Hollow Sculler, too. You can do it with Spell Queller to repeatedly counter spells. Or hey, want to Armageddon the board? Cast Realm Razor kill it in response to the trigger, and all lands will be gone forever. Now here's the key. You need to look for this exact wording, when this enters, and then another trigger when it leaves. Here's why. A while back, we had a talk inside game design, and decided that this combo was really unintuitive to newer or even mini veteran players. And while I'm all for having cool combinations in our game, I have to admit that whenever I explain this to an opponent, I always feel guilty. I have to walk them through this strange rules interaction that feels kind of like cheating. So uh, you may want to have this video at the ready when you try and pull it yourself. So we moved away from Oblivion Ring and Fiend Hunter and into Banishing Light and Banisher Priest. Note the difference in wording here. Under these wordings, if the card is gone by the time the ability resolves, it simply won't exile the creature. It only exiles it until it has left the battlefield and it already has. Quite subtle, but still, every now and then you will see a new one. Spell Queller being a good example of a card we did this way because it doesn't work the other way. Which, on that note, don't kill Spell Queller in response to its trigger unless you want to lose your spell forever. Same reason applies. Let me know by posting down below if you didn't know this trick, or if you did, what your favorite combo with it is. I'll talk with you again soon, and in the meantime, may you find a cool rules loophole.
You got this. After the originals, the next Mox was originally slated to be in 1996's Mirage, a colorless Mox where you could only have one in play at a time called Mox Crystal or Crystalline Mox. Remember this card? Well, of course you don't. They realized it was still really powerful and scrapped 